Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm going to do a performance evaluation and sea trial of a brand new boat from Aquila, the 70 Luxury Power Catamaran. So much thought went into this and into the design process that I want to talk about that first. Let's see what those thoughts were. We've raised the tunnel and the deck of this boat, which provides for better performance and eliminates the pounding that you may get with lower tunnels. We improved the bulb shape on this boat, which would give us much um, reduced pitching through uh, rough weather conditions and just makes for a better running boat overall. You have to understand that with the bulb design, they're usually cylindrical and give a bit of resistance, but they do part the water away. This is a much more streamlined look and you can see how it'll cut through the water a lot easier. Couple that with the fact that it improves the buoyancy of the bow from this narrow entry. It reduces that up and down pitching moment. Instead, it has more of a porpoising look to it. Additionally, notice the spray rails. These are very significant for throwing water away from the boat and keeping it off the deck. Gives you a nice dry ride. The overall shape of the boat was taken into consideration and reducing wind effect is huge. It's easy to see how wind resistance was taken into account by looking at this model. You can see that all the square boxy shapes that we usually see on catamarans has been removed and we've got more aerodynamics and streamlined areas so that we have more of a laminar flow to the wind. And a lot of times this isn't taken into account, but you have to figure that a boat going 20 miles an hour into a 20 mile an hour headwind, that's 40 miles an hour. That can be a significant amount of wind resistance. The Aquila 70 Luxury Power Catamaran has a length overall of 69 feet 9 inches, a beam of 26 feet 11 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 9 inches. With an empty weight of 110,000 pounds, half fuel, and four people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 116,614 pounds. With a pair of 1,000 horsepower Volvo Penta D13 engines run up to 2460 RPM, our speed topped out at 31.4 miles per hour. There really was no best cruise as the range increases fairly linearly as the power is reduced, but I found my hand mostly gravitating to about 2,000 RPM and 24.7 miles per hour. At that speed, the 62 gallon power fuel burn translated into 0.4 miles per gallon in a range of 518 statute miles. If you're going for distance, then drop it down to 1,000 RPM and 9.9 .9 miles per hour. That drops the fuel burn down to 10 gallons per hour and the range will open up to 1,283 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 1,447 gallon total fuel capacity. At this point, I've driven so many Aquilas, I've gotten used to how well they handle and how nice they feel. This 70 is no exception to the rule. It's such a solid boat, a big boat and a heavy boat. It's got a shippy feel to it, if you will. Uh, I noticed that when I put it into a turn, it stays level in the turns. At low speed, like when you're maneuvering around a marina, something like that, if you put it all the way over, it's got a wide turning radius. So I did find myself every once in a while just popping the inside of the turn engine out of gear so it had a little more of a turn to it. Uh, but that's about it. Everything else is so nice with the maneuvering, especially at the dock because we've got the joystick functionality. And I really like the way there's an integration between the joystick, the thruster, and the straight shafts, and the steering. I hadn't seen that before, and I really like how it comes together. It becomes such a smooth handling boat, ideal for an owner-operator. Three 22-inch displays on the console, just behind the digital throttle and shifts. On the helm seat, controls for the forward displays and a joystick. Now, this has a joystick, but it's not pod-driven. This joystick will combine the straight shafts and the bow thruster to give you complete maneuverability around the dock. And notice that it's even got a control for the thruster only, so you can use the joystick just to control the bow thruster. More importantly is that we're not only controlling the straight shafts and the thruster, we're also controlling the rudders. First time I've seen that. Probably the most comfortable spot on board while we're underway will be this lounge seat over on the port hand side of the helm. Great views and a comfortable spot to sit. The lower helm features two 22 inch displays plus the C-Zone panel over on the left hand side. Really like the fact that there's easy access behind the panel for installation and servicing. Down below, we lift the hatch. We've got all kinds of controls here for our climate control, the water maker, even controls for the LED lights and changing the colors. And we've got a handheld VHF. Just alongside the joystick, this is linking not only the straight shafts, but the steering and the bow thruster. 
and our digital shift over on the side. Now notice there's no steering wheel because why? We have joystick steering. Now because this is a distance cruiser and it's going to be spending a lot of time on autopilot, I love that there's a Portuguese bridge to give us a protected area to walk around the flying bridge and get a good view of everything while we're underway. Opening a hatch in the forward end of the salon leads us to the water tanks. There are four of them, two for each hull, 780 liters each side. To the starboard side of the water tanks, we can see neat and orderly wire runs. I like to see that, especially when it's something that's not in plain view. In a hatch located further back are the lithium ion house batteries. The emergency battery bank is located beneath the stairs going below. A lot of impressive features going on in this engine room, so let's get right into it. First of all, they're mirror images of one another between the port and starboard side. We're on the starboard side right now. The only difference between this one and the port side is the air handling system is over on the port side. Other than that, it's all repeated. So let's start getting into it. We'll start with this forward bulkhead with the power distribution panel. We've got two generators, 21 kW each. The power distribution panel automatically will kick one generator on over another generator depending on the hours and as demand increases, then the second generator will come online without you having to do anything. There are four shore power connections on this boat. Two from the Glendenning on the starboard side and then two that are manual inserts over on the port hand side. So you have backup redundancy on both sides and as well as backup redundancy for the fuel system. We can keep the fuel separated from one side to the other or transfer fuel over between the two tanks. Looking just ahead, you've got your Raycor fuel filters. They're dual filters and there's a crossover handle in the middle so we can do our changes on the fly for the filters and notice the white filter just alongside that is for the fuel polishing system continuing on to your left look at the white filters there that is for the water maker system and now you've got the fresh water pump just behind looking on top of the tank over on the side there's your side power thruster system there's one on each side of this boat we've got hydraulic power for the thrusters on both sides the one on the port hand side We'll control the port hand thruster and the anchor windlass at the bow. So two independent hydraulic systems for the thrusters. Looking back, there's your 21 kW generator. And way in back, there's a black box behind that generator. That is controlling the digital steering system so that we have the digital steering interfacing with the straight shafts and the bow thrusters when we use the joystick system. Underneath the side power hydraulic system, there's a fuel tank. Now this is a day tank. There's one on each side. The main tanks are located in the center of the hulls to give it more of a stable balance. Both of those will feed into these day tanks. Of course, the focal point being the Volvo Penta D13 1000 horsepower engine turning straight shafts. Lastly, this exhaust system designed and made in the USA. Now let's talk about a couple of Captain Steve favorite items on this boat. First of all, the joystick functionality. It combines the thruster and the straight shafts, plus the rudder, so there's steering in it as well. That's the first time I've seen that, and it's a significant aspect of this. There's also a button on here to control just the thruster. So if I push that, move the stick back and forth, it's only controlling the bow thruster. The fact that this is also such a heavy boat means that that thruster isn't going to really shove that bow along. Good power on the thruster, it's gonna move the bow, not throw it from one side to the other. Very nice for precision maneuvering around the dock. To both quarters, there are warping winches with heavy duty ballers just ahead. There are large rollers just behind and there's storage underneath for the excess line. And notice that the hatch for the line storage is notched so that we can run the lines into it. Also notice because of the height of this warping winch, the foot controls are down one step. There's another control station on the port hand side here that just flips up. And just as an example of how these guys have their act together, right behind, there's a beveled piece and then a straight piece. And if you just take a seat and lean back, it becomes such a comfortable spot to work the joystick while you've got a side view of the whole boat. And that's the same for both sides. Now what's really impressive is that Aquila even made the dinghy. It's a catamaran rib and it handles great. It makes almost no wake. And the dinghy deploys and stows really easily. Take a look. All these features combined really make this boat worthy of carrying the flagship moniker for the Aquila lineup. And that is my full sea trial and performance evaluation of the all new 70 luxury power catamaran 
from Aquila. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.